Okay, y'all. Hey, what up, y'all? What up, y'all? This your boy LC the one, baby. LC the one to be exact, that is. AKA Illmatic124. And not the motherfucking gang numbers, man. But my actual jersey number I wore when I was in high school. And my warm up jersey is right over there on the back of my motherfucking chair, man. Hey, what's up to my LC Nation, my LC gang, and my LC crew? Hey, what's going around that level, y'all? Let me did. But, man, let me turn this down a little bit, man. And, uh,. I know y'all see the title of the vid, man. It's not my normal reaction and stuff that I do. Y'all know that. And uh, I was going to go live when it happened. Okay? Because I found out when I was at work. Doing the Andy Warhol show. Down here in Chicago at the Art Institute. And it was the last day of the show. Which was January 26, 2019. And I found out. On Facebook through a, a friend she texted me and on my break I found out and I couldn't believe it man I was like oh this got to be nothing but a hoax you know and I was I, I, I instantly Google searched and I started seeing stuff and I was like okay this gonna be this like another death hoax and stuff like that man and you know and uh, it was true and then one of my other friends at my job Shout out to Ruben Flores. He came up to me after, well, this before I got back on the the floor in the actual show, the Andy Warhol show. And um uh one of the 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 maintenance staffs, young lady, she uh was uh trying to get my attention as I was traveling, you know, through the court, through the through the underground areas at the site trying to get back to the area, just avoiding the crowd because it was very crowded. And uh, she was trying to alert me and she was like, say, because uh, uh, she was talking to one of her, uh, you know, co uh, co-workers. And she was like, say. So I look back as I'm going through the little, the, you know, the doors, the security doors that I got, I got to go through. And uh, she was like, man, did you hear about Kobe? And I, I just nodded my head like this. And I was like, you know, I didn't want to say nothing because I still, at that point, didn't know if it was actually really true, you know. And then, when I got off, I started seeing more headlines. I seen Doc Rivers, a Chicago native and stuff, man. He was on there balling and stuff, man. And I was like, damn, this this is really happening. This is really happening. I, I was just in shock, like, damn, you know. So... Uh, I get on the train, I start looking at more interviews and stuff like that, and people coming out and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh my God, man, I can't believe this is happening, man. And, you know, I start seeing the reports that what happened, to, you know, he was in the helicopter, and he was going to his daughter's game and stuff at his academy and stuff, and he coached the team. That's what I had found out by one of my um, uh, peers, well, opinion leaders and stuff that, you know, mentor uh, Tone uh, down at my job. And he was telling me he found out when he was at work and his heart just completely dropped. Now, these are our, our opinion leaders and stuff. And our mentors like Jordan and stuff, you know, they over us and stuff. And, you know, I listen to, we get a lot of knowledge and wisdom from the OGs and stuff, man. So it's like me hearing that, I was like, I was like devastated. Like, I couldn't believe it because, you know, if y'all don't know my background, you know, besides what y'all see me doing now on YouTube, I was a basketball player once before a time. In, in time and I did play and compete against the elite players in the 90s okay that was man Kobe Brown was a part of my class 95 96 that's the class that I came out in and that was the best I think draft class of all time because one of my peers that I played against in high school Kevin Garnett uh, and Ronnie Fields uh, Kevin Garnett actually got drafted to the Minnesota Timberwolves straight out of high school. Along with Kobe Bryant, he was in Philadelphia, got drafted to the LA Lakers. So, you know, we was a real tough pack. And, it, and, and, and I just saying Vince Carter, he, he said something that, you know, we, 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 that's our constituent because he's our age and our age group and stuff like that. And it's like we all came out in the same class, 95, 96, even though I didn't get a chance to play pro because I went down south Tried to play at Gramlin State University. I didn't like it. It was an open walk on the team. I came back to Chicago because I was a 
uh, a sought out prospect here that I was an all star shooter. Got credit card just came to my house personally, you know, and uh, you know, in the city, I was an all star shooter. And you know, when I got to Chicago State, that's why I was trying to go and just play because I was at uh, Kennedy King with Paul McPherson. If y'all know Paul McPherson, another uh, top prospect came out of our class. He just played with Ice Cube in the Big Three League. But you know, we was all that's our, our group. You know, we all friends and stuff. Even though I didn't get a chance to meet Kobe or play against him, I'm pretty sure he was aware of me because I was an all-star too, you know, but a shooter. At my size, six feet and stuff like Allen Iverson, Duncan and stuff. You know, I played just like Kobe. I mean, just like Michael Jordan. We, we all did this, you know, because he, he, he pretty much really uh, uh, inspired us, man, you know, to want to do something and be somebody because they were so classy. Him and Scottie Pippen, they went in that era. And there was a lot of stuff going on, especially in the city of Chicago. So by us seeing Michael Jordan and how he carried himself and his demeanor, and, you know, and he had, he had a good decorum and stuff and business and stuff, and it just resonated on us. And it just filtered down to us watching a black man like that, man, in that time, captivate the, the, the world, you know. And it just, it just it motivated us. And that's why we played. And it's like the way Kobe played, that's how we played in Chicago every day. You know, because Mike played like that. We watched Mike, and he was successful. It made us want to be like Mike, okay? And everybody else got a chance to see that because we was, he was on WGN, the news network, on Channel 9 in Chicago, and it was broadcasted all over the world. So everybody had a chance to see Michael Jordan play. But anyway, man, back to Kobe, and it's like, you know, we came out the same class, man. And it's like, you know, I played against Ronnie Fields, and Ronnie Fields was the best player in the in the country at that time. And Kobe Brown was like second or third behind him. You know, and Ronnie Fields, I played against Ronnie. Personally, I played against Ronnie Fields, you know, in high school. And we used to play at this little uh, middle school called Diet, and it's now ran by Ryan Fest. It's right here on 51st and King Drive. If you ever come to Chicago and you visit and you go down the south side, if you stop by 51st and Kane Drive, you'll see that little school is called Dyke. We used to always have our freshman and our sophomore games there. And before Kevin Garnett got to the city, we used to beat up on Ronnie Fields. You can ask him, it's a true story. I played at Wendell Phillips. Our best player's name was Floyd Farrell. We had a bunch of them, Eric Watkins, Antoine Anderson, Antonio Dominguez. It was a bunch of us, man. You know, and I was an all-star shooter, Lawrence Martin and stuff like that. That was my name. And stuff, man. And, you know, we played against uh, Ronnie Fields, and he was the best player. And Kobe Bryant would tell you he was dope. You know, but we all emulated Michael Jordan, man. You know, we got our swag from Michael Jordan. And I didn't even want to do this video, man, because, you know, once I seen Vince Carter say something today, you know, I was like, man, I got to speak on because I got a whole lot of different theories about what really happened. You know, and it's like, it just makes you think. And it, 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 it scares people. You know, and it's like, I felt some type of way at work, man. You know, I didn't want to say nothing, you know, because it's like, it, especially in, in this fraternity as a basketball player, I'm still a basketball player first, musician second, entertainer third. But it's like, that's what we do, man. That's what I was trained to do. Even though I didn't get a chance to play in the NBA, I had the opportunity. Bo Ellis, y'all know him, he's a great, came out of the city and stuff, got drafted by the Washington Bulls. He sat me down and... Stopped me from playing in the NBA when I got to Chicago State. He told me about the NCAA and their rules. Because I was walking on, I was going on and off, and I hit my door, and I didn't want to put my family through all that, man. You know, trying to go through the CBA and all. I had a, I had a background and stuff, but I, I didn't want to do all that. So I chose another route. I used my education, my mind. And that's what Kobe did, too. And a lot of us did. We came out of that class with Michael Jordan. And like I said, man, he taught us about intellect. And Kobe had that. And he was the representative of my class, man, my generation, you know. And, you know, it, it struck me hard, man, when I heard that. I was chopping it up with my cousin. I was like, man, this, this, is a, it, this is some Illuminati stuff, man. You know, because this was like premeditated to me. That's what I'm thinking. And I hate to say that, man, but that's how I feel. Because I feel like they snatched our leader for our group, which was the most successful. Him and Kevin Garnett made the most money in the NBA. NBA history, I was telling a young co-worker today about that. And everybody know that, man. And I think we had a lot of, uh, he had a lot of good, big plans for our group in general. Because we haven't been blessed to be owners yet, man. 
Michael Jordan was a chance to have, got the opportunity, but you know, I still think our group deserves that, man. You know, to own an NBA franchise, uh, franchise, you know, and I think Kobe was on this quest to do that, man, to own the Lakers or something, man, because we 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 uh we deserve it because we made a lot of money for the NBA. Our group and we was the most athletic, the most talented. You know, even though Michael Jordan was the greatest player of all time, you can't say nothing about the 95, 96 class, man. It was the greatest class in basketball history. It had more Hall of Famers than any other class, you know. And it's like, man, it's like a, I can't even put this in words, man. Like, what's going on? It's like, damn. You know, it's supposed to keep us safe, man, you know. And I, the la I left basketball, and the last thing I left them with was a dunk with Timberland boots on. Something ain't never been done in the world. And that was a testament to show that our class was that athletic and great, you know, and talented. You know, so, you know, this is my tribute to Kobe, man. You know, I love you, boy. You know, and one day we will meet in heaven, man. And this wasn't your time. I know it wasn't your time. I, can't, I still can't believe it was your time, man. You know, and I'm going to leave it at that, man, because I don't want to say too much. And they get taken out of context and stuff like that, man. But, you know, when I, I told my cousin, and he's the same age as Kobe. You know, Kobe, like a year younger than me. And I told him, like, when Kobe retired, I'm done. And when Kobe left, I left. Because that was, he was the last one. Well, Kobe, well, Kevin Garnett was the last one from my group to leave. You know, but when they left, I was done with basketball. So... I think I'm going to stick to that, man. Much love, Kobe. I'm out, man. Boy. Yeah. 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 Hey, man. I'm just going to keep it 100 with y'all, man. That's all y'all niggas out there, man. Yeah. They're saying I ain't the OG, the original. Yeah. Hey, man. He's a duplicate. Yeah. He's a duplicate. He's a duplicate. Yeah. He's a duplicate. Yeah. He's a duplicate. Nigga. He's a duplicate. He's a duplicate. Yeah. 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 He's a yeah, don't forget to get your custom t-shirts, you dig what I'm talking about from LC the one. You see the custom prints all over the shirt, you dig what I'm talking about. We ain't playing no game. The custom sweater, you dig what I'm talking about, yeah. Uh-huh. With the back end print on the same. I got the t-shirts as well. You did unisex, long sleeve. You dig now we got the full zip up. You dig what I'm talking about. Stood up with the hood on it. Stood up with the back print as well. You dig what I'm talking about. We ain't playing no game. And then I got the full zip up. Custom with the pockets on it and stuff. You dig what I'm talking about. Back print. And sleeve and print. You dig on to my prints everywhere. Then I got the yoga pants. You dig on to joggers. You dig on talking about for men. And I got the crop new t shirts for the ladies. You dig on talking about. Look at that. She look comfortable in it. Uh huh. Then I got the sports bra. You dig on talking about. Get the sports bra. You dig on talking about the back print print. You dig on talking about the back print print. You dig on talking about. We ain't playing no game. And then I got the yoga pants for the ladies. You dig on talking about. Biker booty shorts. You dig on talking about. So that put that piece can round out. You dig on talking about. Then I got the, the yoga leggings. You dig on I'm talking about when she jogging and everything and I got the capris right there with the custom LC right between the thighs You dig and I got the the custom socks you dig on tomorrow You ain't gonna find no more socks like that nowhere on the planet and then last but not least I got the LC the one Jersey you dig on talking about then I got the back print on there look at that back print look good Then I got the Illmatic one my street ball jersey with the two fold on it And then I got the little sleeve pull up bag right there for the ladies you dig on draw screen back And then I got the real backpack you know what I'm talking about LC the one look at the back Look at the front. You dig on look at the top. You dig on talk about everything is looking good. You dig on talk about and they'll see the worst neighborhood. And then I got the X Star iPhone 10 case. You dig on talk about. And then I got the iPhone 6 case. 7, 8, 9. Let's order what you want. And then I got the custom print. You dig on talk about LC the one baby. And then I got the custom mug. And when you want to get drunk and drink and stuff to my stream. And then I got the snuggle pillow. When you want to get snuggled with your lady. Yeah.